Hello and welcome to another video on Progressive Coder. Today we are going to learn more about type ORM. We will cover an important topic about entity relations in type ORM. If you are new to the channel, consider subscribing and don't forget to press the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Alright then, so what is the need of entity relations? In any reasonably realistic data model, there are bound to be multiple entities needed to completely describe your business domain. And when there are multiple entities involved, they would be related to each other in some way. Hence, we need a way to describe relationships between entities. Databases have their own way of establishing relationships between tables using foreign keys and then using joins to connect two or more tables. However, ORMs also need to provide a way to describe these entity relations in a programmatic way. Type ORM is no different. It provides a bunch of decorators using which we can declare various relations such as one-to-one, one-to-many and many-to-many -many relationships. Let us look at all the relation types one at a time. First is the type ORM one-to-one -one relation. Consider that we are building a Twitter-like application. First off, we have an entity to store basic information such as first name and last name of the user. Let's call it the member entity. To store other information such as the number of followers and following, we have another entity known as profile entity. This is a typical one-to-one -one relationship. Basically, for every member, there will be one profile. So how do we describe such a relation in type ORM? The member entity will have some basic fields such as first name and last name. These are decorated with column decorator. We also have an ID field decorated with primary generated column. Then we have the profile field. It is of type profile. We decorate it with a special annotation known as one to one. This annotation takes a target function pointing to the profile entity. We can also pass additional options such as cascade to the decorator. For example, cascade true makes sure that inserts, updates and deletes to the member entity are cascaded to profile as well. We also need to decorate the profile with the join column decorator in case we are dealing with one to one annotation. This will signal to type ORM to have a special column as a reference to the profile entity. The profile entity on the other hand will be a typical entity class with a couple of columns. The class is decorated with entity decorator and columns are decorated with column decorators. Using the entity with one to one relation is pretty straightforward. We create an instance of the member class, then we create a profile instance, we set the profile on the member object and use the member repository to save the records to the database. In this case, we will have one record in the member table and one record in the profile table. The member table will have a foreign key reference to the profile. Since we had used cascade as true, both records were created with a single save statement. Moving on, the next important relationship is the one to many relationship. In our example, we have a member and every member can have one or more tweets. This is a classic one to many relationship. So how do we model this in type ORM? First step, we add tweets to the member entity. We decorate it with one to many decorator and its target is the tweet entity. We also need to specify the field name of the relation field within the tweet entity. That is going to be called tweet.member. Also, we add cascade as true. This will ensure that when we insert a member with some tweets, it will insert records into the tweet table as well. Next, we have the tweet entity. Again, it has the ID field and a field for storing the actual content. To establish the relation with the member entity, it has the member variable with many to one decorator. This will target the member entity and the specific field is member.tweets. Using the one to many relation is again quite straightforward. Extending our previous example, we also create a tweet and add it to the member.tweets array. Then we can save the member using the member repository. 
In this case, we will have one record in the member tables. The member table in itself won't have any reference to the tweet records. However, we will have a record in the tweet table with member ID as the foreign key reference. Going ahead, we can now look at many-to-many -many relationship. In our example, what could be a potential many-to-many -many relationship? In my view, a good example could be the relation between tweets and hashtags. One tweet can have one or more hashtags. However, one hashtag can also have one or more tweets. This is a classic many-to-many -many relationship. So how do we describe such a relationship in type ORM? First, we will create a new field hashtags in the tweet entity. We decorate it with many to many with the target being the hashtag entity. Also, we need to annotate hashtags with join table annotation. This will basically ensure that a new table will be created apart from tweet and hashtags. This new table will hold the relation between tweets and hashtags. Then we create the hashtag entity. We have the ID field the tag field for storing the name of the hashtag and then a reference to the tweet table. We use many to many again, but this time it is targeting the tweet entity and specifically the tweet hashtag table. Also, we have the join table decorator as before. To work with many to many, we can create a new tweet and a new hashtag object. We also add the hashtag to the tweet object and save the tweet. This will create one record in the tweet table, one record in the hashtag table for type ORM and one record in the tweet hashtags hashtag relation table. This is basically the link table between tweets and hashtags. With this, we are basically done with looking at all the possible relation types in type ORM. If this video was helpful, please do like and comment. See you until next time.